Welcome to Psalms of the Savior, Devotions for His Sheep. Today, we're finding ourselves in the very last psalm of our journey through the psalms, and we come to Psalm 150. I'm Jonathan Keensler, and it's my pleasure to do this last one, and I've entitled this psalm, People of Praise. We're going to be looking at the whole psalm, but especially verse 6, the last verse of the psalms. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 150 begins and ends with hallelujah, that is, praise the Lord, even as do Psalms 145 to 149. All of 145 through 150 begin and end with hallelujah. And it's a a fitting conclusion to this book which highlights praise to God. Everything that has breath, he concludes, is, a, it, is to praise the Lord. And this is actually a reference to all humanity, that everything that has breath. And it could even go further to include all of all animals as well. But it's especially alluding to God's breathing into Adam's nostrils, the breath of life in Genesis 2 verse, verse 7. God created humanity in his image that we might reflect his glory. We see that in Genesis 1, 26 to 27. That was what we were created to. Our very purpose is to reflect our creator. And when we don't, that's the opposite of praising the Lord. That's blaspheming God. We're saying something about God that isn't true. And that's why there's judgment. But when we align ourselves with his purpose, when we seek to please him, we're no doubt going to praise the Lord. And so this psalm calls us to praise him in everything we say and do. Um, and wherever we are, with, with all content, and with every instrument of praise. And so first of all, we find the place of prayer in Psalm 150 um, verse 1. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. These both speak of praising God in his temple. Remember, uh, the heavens are his throne and the earth is his footstool. He dwells in, in heaven. And so God is, is in the heavens. This is where he is to be to be praised. And actually, it's an awesome thought. Understand, God wants to take us from only dwelling on earth, being earth dwellers, that's even what the name Adam or humanity means in, in Hebrew, and he wants us to he wants us to take us even to be with him in heaven. Or another way of saying it is to bring heaven and earth together. Um, as in throne and footstool. He wants us to be with him. He wants to be with us forever. And so understand the aspect of sanctuary and mighty heavens isn't referring to only a first temple or at the same time his heavenly dwelling place, but actually to all of God's creation. Psalm 66 verses 1 and 2 say, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made. And so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. God desires that all creation would be the place of his manifest presence. In other words, as we've seen in verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. But it's in every place as well of God's creation. Secondly, we see themes of, of praise. God is to be praised both for what he does and who he is. We see that in verse 2. Praise him for his mighty deeds. That's what he does. We see his works. We see the exodus. He brings Israel out of Egypt. We see in Christ he delivers us, saves his people from their sins. That's what God does because of his mercy and his grace. And so he reveals himself to us. We would never know God except he, uh, he makes himself known. And so what's our response? Our response is to praise him. And we desire to continue to carry it out, out his will and make him known by declaring his, his praises. It's our privilege to make him known. There could be no greater word we could proclaim, no greater name we could lift up. There's no greater information we could seek and learn and grow in and let other people know than the good news of Jesus Christ, God's plan of salvation that seeks to redeem sinful humanity and make and turn people from sinners to saints 
that's good news indeed. And we have the privilege of sharing in that work. First Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Every Christian has a reason to praise, to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord here. Praise the Lord in church. Praise the Lord um, to your neighbor. Wherever you are, praise the Lord. And lastly, we see instruments of, of praise um, in verses 3 to 5. In verses 3 to 5, talk about the different instruments. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Every instrument, we are to praise the, praise the Lord. And then it, it leads all, it ends with this verse, everything that has breath, praise him with your voice. And when I was growing up, it was also praise him with your 10 stringed instruments, with your hand. We're to praise him with everything that we are, with everything that we have, and in every place. And that's the message of Psalm 150. And just one last note here, in, Psalm, in Revelation 4 to 5, as with this psalm, all earthly and heaven, heavenly beings praise God with instruments in his heavenly throne room. You might remember the, the, um, the idea of harps that they are, they are um, playing there. There are, however, two significant differences. The worship in Revelation is Trinitarian, as in its worship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We could look at Revelation 1, 4 to 5, just to, to see that. But we see this, the Lamb and also the one who's on the throne, the Father and the Son and the Spirit of God who, who is there um, as well. But the praise in, that's first. We, we, in the New Testament, God is revealed in three persons. And all the persons, all three persons of God deserve our praise and our worship. The praise in Revelation 4, 8, though, is also um, explicitly mentioned to never cease. And so we see there that they, um, they never stop singing. It says, day and night, they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And that's our praise as well, that he is the one who always was. He's the one who delivers, who saves, who loves, who judges, who helps he never changes, and he's our God, and he's worthy of our praise. So in what ways do you give praise to God? And is there any aspect or location in your life where you do not praise him? Is there any room that you make use of that is, you do not give praise to God there? Is there any part of your body that does not give praise to, to God? Can you say your hands give praise to God in all that you do? Does your tongue, is it submitted to God to give him praise? That's our goal. That's our desire. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, he empowers us to do so and to give him praise in all areas of our life. So how do you feel about praise being a part of our lives now and also throughout eternity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this psalm that you call us to give you praise in all places, in, with all means, and for all that you are. And that's what we're going to do both now and always. Lord, let praise arise in our hearts and let us give you praise and let us choose to praise you every day and always. In your name we pray. Amen.